I'm glad. I'm glad you are here. I'm trying to break the secret music code. I hear that music is written like a secret code. I'm trying to break it. Here, music, secret code. I don't know what all of this means. I try to break the code, break, cannot do it. Break, Maybe break you can code. help me break the music code. Whoa, whoa, careful there. I can help you break the music code, but breaking the code doesn't mean smashing it. Okay, all you have to do is learn what a few symbols mean and you can break the code. Let me help you. So in today's lesson, we're learning how to break the secret code of music. So let's have a look at our lesson objectives. By the end of the lesson, you will be able to, one, draw a treble clef, two, explain what pitch of notes we play when we see the treble clef, three, recite the musical alphabet and play it on either glockenspiel or the keyboard. And you'll also be able to perform it in a duet and you will be able to describe what the staff or the stave, depending on which word your teacher uses, looks like. On the screen now is an example of some sheet music. Look at that, it is a bunch of weird symbols. Very confusing if you don't know what the symbols mean. Well, all we have to do is learn what the symbols mean and then we can read the music. <laughs> Now you may wonder, why do we use symbols? Why don't we just use words for music and make it easier? Well, that's because there are so many different languages around the world. Way too many languages to learn. All right, governor, here it there. Bonjour. Konnichiwa. Hola. Allo. Ciao, ciao. There are so many different languages around the world and that is why music is written in code. Every country around the world uses the same code, so anyone, anywhere in the world can pick up a piece of music and play it no matter what language they speak. This code they use all around the world is called notation. Music notation. Composers around the world write music using this notation code. The code tells the musicians what to play and anyone can understand it no matter what language they speak. Today we are looking at notation code for high notes. This curly little guy is called the treble clef. Ooh, that's a hard word. The treble clef. When you see the treble clef, it means we are playing high notes. Notes that are high in pitch. <laughs> time you see this funny squidgy essy curly whirly looking guy this is the treble clef and when you see the treble clef it means you're playing high notes right time to test and see if you're listening you see this guy you see the curly whirly squidgy little guy what is he called I'm gonna to count to three and you are going to shout out his name one two three Terrible. Let's try it again. Remember, I'll give you a hint. He's called the treble clef. Okay, ready? Shout it out in one, two, three. That's right. He is called the treble clef. Now, when we see the treble clef, what type of notes are we playing? Can you remember? Do you need to cheat and ask someone next to you? Remember with the treble clef, you're playing high notes. Notes that have a high pitch. Ouch, high notes sometimes hurt your ears, they're so high, a high note. Now this treble clef here, he lives not in a house, not in a forest. He lives on the musical ladder. Now the musical ladder is called the staff or the stave. It really depends on your teacher. I had one teacher that called it the staff and another one that called it the stave. Both of them are right. So just see what your teacher calls them. So the staff or the stave, whatever you call it, is just five lines. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. 
Five lines that create a musical ladder. How easy is that? Five lines. Boop, 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 boop. And the treble clef lives on these five lines. So that is what the staff or the stave is. It's just five old boring lines, or at least they seem to be boring until you realize just how important those lines are. But we'll talk more about that later. For now, we're really focusing on that squidgly old treble clef. So here is the treble clef now and how it sits on the staff or the stave. It sits on the staff or the stave like this. And remember, if we see this at the beginning of our music, it means we have to play high notes. So if you're playing the keyboard, you would use the right hand, the right side of the keyboard, because that's the high notes. You wouldn't use the left, because that's low. Yay! So here's a challenge. Can you draw the treble clef yourself? Hmm, a bit tricky if you don't know how, but don't worry, I'm going to show you how to draw the treble clef. Now it takes practice. Check this out. Kai the dog had a little bit of a go at drawing uh, the treble clef. As we know, practice makes perfect. Have a look at his first one. Ooh, and his second one. But his third one was much better. So you just gotta keep on practicing. It begins with a swirly whirly. It goes up for a loop the loop and then comes down and has a little tail. And again, it begins with a swirly whirly. It goes up, loops the loop and comes back down with a little tail. Swirly whirly, loop the loop tail. Let's try it again. A swirly whirly. A loop the loop. And a little tail. Ah, oh, so beautiful. So now is the time to pause the video and on scrap paper or class whiteboards, whatever, you are going to try and draw the treble clef yourself. Remember, it's tricky. Your teacher can help you and keep practicing. Your first one might be a disaster, just like Kai, but the more you practice, the better they get. Pause the video and have a go at your treble clefs. A swirly whirly. A loop the loop and a little tail. Welcome back guys, how did you go? You've done it! You have unlocked level one of the code breaking. Woohoo! Celebration! Level one is unlocked. You've unlocked level one. Yay! Well done guys. So we know in level one now, we know what the treble clef is. We know the treble clef means we're playing high notes. We know what the staff or the stave looks like. We are rocking it. So now we move on to level two. And in level two, we look at notes. So here's some examples of some notes now that are living on our staff or our stave. Now, you can see, oh, they're popping up and down. Some of them are on the lines, some of them are in the spaces. We'll talk a bit more about that later. But each note is matched to a letter. Each note has a letter that matches to it. The problem is, how do we know what letters to use? There's a big alphabet, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S. You know the alphabet. So then we go, okay, uh, which letter belongs, belongs to what note? Well, lucky for you, it's actually really easy. There is a musical alphabet. Those are the letters that we use. And you know what? The musical alphabet is really easy because it only has seven letters. How easy is that? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 
It finishes at G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No H, no I, just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You only have to remember seven letters. Now to help you with that, there is this awesome music alphabet video available on YouTube and the link is on the screen now. You're going to pause my video and you're going to watch that video, just the first three minutes and 30 seconds. The link is on the screen now or you can find the link in the description below. So pause the video and watch just the first three minutes and 30 seconds of the Music Alphabet video with the link below. So now we can say the musical alphabet, let's have a look at it on our musical instruments. So if you have a look at my piano here, you can actually see the musical alphabet over and over and over and over again, right? Here we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and again! And it goes over and over and over and over again on my piano. So I could play the musical alphabet for you now. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The musical alphabet. That's the musical alphabet once on the piano. But of course it goes over and over and over. But it's not just the piano that uses the musical alphabet. Here is a glockenspiel. I like this instrument. It's rainbow. Now you can see here as well, there's some little letters. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then it starts again. A, B. B, C. So you can see the musical alphabet is used to play lots of different instruments. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So you've seen me play it, it's your turn to play it. So what you're going to do is play the musical alphabet in a duet. That means two people play together at exactly the same time. It's more challenging than playing it by yourself. So in your duet challenge, you're going to see if you can play the musical alphabet forwards, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then backwards, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Ooh. Now it's up to your teacher what instrument you use. You might use glockenspiels, you might use keyboards, you might use xylophones. I don't know. It's up to your teacher. Okay, so now is the time to uh, pause the video and listen to your teacher to find out the details of your duet challenge. Good luck. Did you succeed at your duet challenge? Can you play the musical alphabet? Do you know the musical alphabet off by heart? If you do, you have unlocked level two, guys. Congratulations, level two of notation code breaking unlocked. And we've come to the end of our beginner's look at notation. Let's have a look at our lesson objectives and double check that we achieved them all. It's always a good idea to self-reflect at the end of your lesson. And that brings you to the end, guys, of our beginner's notation lesson. We hope you enjoyed it. Now there's a lot more to learn when it comes to notation. So keep an eye on our YouTube channel, Pizazz Primary Performing Arts and look out for the next video which goes into more detail about line and space notes and some cheats to help you to work out which letters of the musical alphabet belong to what notes on the staff. So remember guys, the whole world's a stage and the stage is yours. Enjoy and I'll see you again at Pizzazz Performing Arts.